You're not afraid of death and getting, you know, getting older. No, well, too late about getting older. I mean, uh, my bucket list number one is wake up. But it's <laughs> well, little did we know that conversation would have such a poignant new meaning today. You know, at the time, it was a triumphant return to the Tonight Show. Her first appearance, as Joan says, she was locked out of late night. And Joan's feud with Johnny Carson was just one of many adversities in her life. There was the tragic loss of her husband and the immense obstacle she had to overcome to break through as a female comedian. So in tonight's big picture, we look at Joan, the survivor. I would perhaps not wanted seven years of struggle. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have wanted seven years of ketchup soup. I wouldn't have wanted seven years of sneaking out of windows when you bombed or not being paid and waiting for, for, for checks that never came. But I'm, I'm glad I, I'm glad I paid my dues. A girl, a girl, you're 30 years old, you're not married, you're an old maid. A man, he's 90 years old, he's not married, he's a catch. It's a whole different thing. <laughs> it was an era of Carson, Williams, Pryor, Rickles. Joan was one of the only women in a comedy world dominated by men. M my wedding night was a disaster because I have zero, zero. Um, <laughs> My husband said, let me help you with the buttons, and I said... <laughs> I said, I'm naked! <laughs> if I had been a man, it would have been much, a much easier time. Uh, they just weren't ready to hear things come out of a woman's mouth. You can't say that! You say, would you say that to Robin Williams? Would you say this, that to Richard Pryor? No, then why are you saying that to me? But Joan did persevere, and through her own will and determination, she became the most celebrated female comic of her time. As a child, I was like, one day I'll be in Hollywood, one day I'll be in Hollywood, I'll, I'll, I'll be a star. And then suddenly, there you are, in cement, and that's wonderful. Also, now when people spit on me, I don't have to be there. <laughs> but it's the challenges she has faced, which in many ways have defined her career, including periods where the phone stopped ringing. I know what it's like to have nothing, to wake up, and I'm a busy woman, I've worked since I was 16, and to wake up and have nowhere to go and nothing to do. So I'd rather have a busy plate, thank you. Another obstacle Joan overcame was getting shut out of late night by her own mentor, Johnny Carson. Christy Brinkley now has, is a little full of body. What do you got? She's beautiful. You like that? Like that. Uh oh, I'd love to look like her. Really? But not upstate, I mean, there's nothing going on. Nothing up here. Oh, 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 grow up. I don't even hear you. The real person to open the door was Johnny Carson. But the love fest between Joan and Johnny would turn into one of Hollywood's biggest feuds. Joan had been a Tonight Show guest for more than 20 years, and she also filled in for Johnny when he was on vacation. In 1986, Joan was offered her own late night show by Fox. $15 million is, is definitely the move. For, for a three year contract, yeah. you thought you'd be financially solved. Forever. Have you spoken to Johnny Carson? No, I, I, uh, I called him twice. I'm very upset about this, and he didn't return my call. You think he's angry? I think it's a 23-year relationship. I think he should be so happy and proud for me, because I adore him so much, and I would be so happy and proud for him, and I'm, I'm devastated he hasn't called. Answer the call, I just am, I don't want to talk about him, I'm just devastated. But Joan fought through her feelings. Her show went head-to-head -head against Johnny's. I think he was furious. He felt betrayed. I was now a competitor. He literally had me blacklisted. E.T. was with Joan as she celebrated 100 episodes, although the show was sinking in the ratings. It's been very tough. Um, tremendous amount of antagonism in the press. Press has been evil, evil. But Joan's show crashed and burned. The man blamed for it all was the producer, Joan's husband, Edgar Rosenberg. And not long after Fox canceled it, Joan and Edgar separated. He went into a deep depression and his health fell apart. He was drowning. And I said, I cannot help you. You must go for help. You must get help. You can't pull me down because I'm not. I was drowning too. I had been fired and publicly humiliated and left for dead along with my husband. And I said, you've got to get help, and he wouldn't get help. Edgar committed suicide in 1987 by taking an overdose of prescription pills in a Philadelphia hotel room. My daughter came into the room, and she said, uh, sit down, I have something terrible to tell you. And I just said, just tell me, don't. And she said, they found Daddy. And uh, my poor daughter had the burden of time. He left us high and dry. Everything just went. 
And he left me with no career and a lot of debts because he wasn't a good businessman. Joan mourned, and then she devoted herself to her daughter Melissa and her own work. Stand up after stand up, she rebuilt her life around the things she loved, her family, and being funny. I'm always very in awe of, of people that sing. I sang once for Barbara Streisand, this is a true story, and her eyes crossed the other way. It was just... <laughs> and boy, those knocks came. I mean, my firing from Fox, and on top of that, my husband's death. And um, on top of that, I was locked out of late night television. And uh, you, there was no place for me to work for a while. And you just, every morning I would wake up and just say, I've just got to break through, I've just got to get it again.